in the studio by Jacob Maroga, former ESCOM CEO, to discuss BRICS and the opportunity for economic partnership between the bloc and the African continent. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. As you know, there's a lot going on, a lot of priorities on the agenda. What do you expect from the current BRICS summit, given the unprecedented global attention it is drawing? Well, I, I think the first thing is um, it happening in physical form for the first time after a few years, I think it's a good thing. Mm. It happening in South Africa it creates uh, a lot of excitement and opportunity for South Africa and Africa. Uh, but generally, I think the whole collaboration of the global South, led by BRICS, led by Russia, led by China, India, and South Africa, I think is a good step. And the second point is that there's going to be an expanded BRICS, and I think more African countries will come. And I think that will create a better opportunity for development for African countries. There's been a significant boost in interest and buzz around the BRICS summit. Over 40 countries yes. want to be a part of it. Why? What makes them so, the, the bloc so attractive to so many countries, do you think? Look, I mean, uh, already BRICS um, has almost 50% of the world's population, close to 30% 30, 30 of the world's GDP. Um, you know, the second largest economy, um, uh, China, um, Brazil, you know, in the top 10, India. So you are joining a very big... I suppose it's part of the excitement of the BRICS. Just to explain to our viewers, there's nothing to be worried about. These are some fighter jets which are protecting the airspace over South Africa. We have a lot of VIPs in yes. attendance, so yes. nothing to be concerned about. Excuse yes. me, as you were saying. And the point is that I think because of the size of the BRICS as a bloc, um, and the fact that you've got so many, um, a bigger population that you represent, um, a bigger GDP in terms of the world stage. So you are joining a bigger economic bloc. And I think many companies, uh, many countries, see an opportunity for trade, for development in joining BRICS. And I think it also creates a better balance in the world where we, you know, we have the existing blocks. Now we, we, we're increasing you know, the size and the number of the economic blocks. I think that's an exciting era for, for the world. What challenges might, they, uh, might pop up as BRICS expands? Well, I think in the end is whether you have common interests mm. uh, and whether some of the conflicts that are pre-existing don't get brought into BRICS. Um, um, and I, I think you know, in any new formation, you bring the potential for interests that are not aligned. But I think uh, there's more positive than, than negatives in my view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as you know, South Africa is looking to attract more African states into the BRICS. What do you think that the, uh, the BRICS and Africa would offer each other and vice versa? Well, I think already, obviously, you know, at, at BRICS, um, African countries are opening trade barriers, you know, building a common trade area so that there's, there's more trade amongst themselves. So when you bring BRICS, you, you're also increasing that trade pool. So I think it will bring more trade to Africa, bring more intra-trade in Africa, but also expand a, a market for African countries. Because one of the things, for instance, in the energy space, Africa has got minerals that are critical for the energy transition. And the bigger BRICS market offers the opportunity of that market. Uh, in your opinion, do you think the Western uh, states treat Africa differently, especially those that are of the BRICS members and then the non BRIC members? Yeah, I think, I think, you see, the bigger you are, the more respect you'll get the more bargaining power you have, uh, the more you could organize yourself as you talk to the bigger countries. So I think they will, it's going to change the way Africa looks at itself and the way the rest of the world looks at Africa as part of the, the BRICS community. Do you feel like a stronger BRICS presence within Africa might bring more stability and security to some of the crisis-hit uh, countries? Absolutely. I think, for me, the, the, the economy, I think, is a big thing. If you join a bigger community of bigger 
developed economic um, countries, it creates much more opportunity for, for, for the economy, which Africa needs across the entire continent. Economic development is key, and I think this will bring a lot of positives economically and building industries in Africa. And speaking of, you know, economic uh, development, trade amongst the BRIC states is just growing faster than our counterparts anticipated for it to grow. It has already surpassed the G7 states. And do you think that illustrates the independence of Africa from its Western partners and, more specifically, Europe? Well, I don't want to see it as competition. I want to see it as, as, as addition. We are adding more friends, we are adding more trading partners, um, but it also gives us more options. Um, we are not tied to, to one group. So it, we see it more as abundant opportunities as opposed to com competing op uh, mm. you know, uh, con uh, um, opportunity, uh, uh, conflicting interests. And what are your thoughts on this gold-backed blocks, uh, BRICS currency that uh, people are talking about? How will that change the world? Well, I think it will, it will take some time to, to change currencies. So the first thing is for countries to trade in their national currencies. Um, and I think the next um, step could be a one BRICS currency. It will take time. Um, but I think once you are united as a, as a bigger force, those considerations of actually creating one currency becomes possibilities. Fantastic. And, you know, with the U.S. dollar losing global dominance, uh, can the BRICS bank become a more powerful alternative for the global south? Well, I think it already is. Uh, the fact that um, it's beginning to invest in infrastructure in the global south, helping state-owned enterprises, governments, and also going into the private sector, because it's creating an alternative pool of funding. So it's already helping the global south to do some of the things that otherwise it couldn't do. So it's already a positive thing, the, you know, the, the, the development bank. An issue is, how I see, is that the Western, Western countries kind of see BRICS and the expansion of BRICS and the growth of, of BRICS as a rival to traditional blocs like the G7 and the G20. Do you think, how do you think this is going to play out? Do you think they're just going to accept that this is a new frontier, that this is a multipolar world emerging? Do you think a confrontation um, might be likely? Well, some of the leaders today spoke to that. And I think the, the, the emerging theme is let's not look at a one civilization dominance. Mm. Let's look at multi civilization different parts of development, and BRICS is that part of showing that you can develop in different ways. Um, so, so we shouldn't see it as a competition, and I hope the European countries don't see it as competition. They see a block emerging that creates opportunities also for them, but also for development of the global south, and them, the global south, doing it for themselves. Indeed. What a note to end that on. Jacob Moroga, former ESCOM CEO, many thanks for your time. Thank I really you. appreciate Thank you it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, well, there'll be plenty more interviews in the coming days here on RT as we continue to bring you all the latest from the 15th annual BRICS Summit in South Africa. Don't miss our special coverage of the global event directly from the RT studio at the venue itself. Bye. Afrique Media. Le Monde. C'est nous.